A very good day to all the participants of the Climate Change Conference 2010. The quest for survival in limited resources has diverted current strategies towards renewable resource management and sustainable development. Energy is the most important commodity and with energy consumption growing at a quick pace and supplies of natural gas and fossil fuels dwindling, economies are likely to face acute energy crisis. Visionaries are thus looking at renewable energy resources which can be used in near future to meet the fuel and energy demands. The need for alternative sources of energy has diversified research towards production of biofuels that can be used as a substitute for petroleum-derived fuels. One of the most popular, relatively clean and easily adaptable renewable energy is ethanol, which yields 25% more energy and reduces greenhouse gas emissions by 12%. This study, entitled Non-Edible Lignocellulosic Refuse as Feedstock for Microbial Production of Bioethanol, focuses on the possibility of agricultural waste to be used as feedstock for the production of ethanol. Biofuel is any fuel that can be obtained from large mass of biological material. With the large variety of biomass available for conversion into fuel, the categorization of biofuels into first generation and second generation biofuels originated. The first generation biofuels were derived from seeds, sugars or grains and second generation from crop residues, woody crops and grasses. Biofuels can address a number of problems with respect to energy demand, economics and environmental impact. Overall, biofuels have a number of advantages over fossil fuels. With the development of adequate technology and scale-up, biofuels can be significantly less expensive than fossil fuels, particularly because they are made from low-cost feedstocks. Biofuels can be made from a variety of renewable sources like agricultural or food waste. It takes many years for fossil fuels to be produced, whereas biofuels are easily renewable due to the larger availability of the feedstocks. The use of non-edible plant parts poses no threat to food security and to land cover for cultivation of the biofuel crops. The generation of biofuels can create employment opportunities and can provide economic stimulus to the agriculture sector, improving economics of the nation. Biofuels offer a safer alternative to preserve the atmospheric quality and lower air pollution. They have a potential to mitigate the greenhouse effect. Biofuels can have an impact on the environmental quality since they can reduce the emission of pollutants, thus indirectly contributing to the reduction of carbon footprint and global warming. The impact they would have on the overall climate would depend on a number of factors. For example, the feedstock used, the management practices, the use of land cover, and the process economics. However, lignocellulosic residues offer better feedstocks as the non-edible plant parts pose a disposable problem. They are rich in carbohydrates and thus their microbial conversion can generate good quantity of biofuel, that is ethanol. The flow of experiments performed in this study explain the stepwise conversion of the agri-waste to ethanol. The raw material used in this study were non-edible plant parts like peels of potato, banana and oranges. 
These were dried and ground to a fine powder and treated with dilute acids and alkalis, followed by neutralization and incubation with lignocellulitic enzymes, which can break down and release the sugars trapped in complex polymers. This process is called saccharification, which leads to the production of free sugar that undergoes microbial fermentation, thus producing ethanol. The pretreatment basically reduces the particle size of the raw material and makes it more facile for enzymatic attack. Since plant material is a complex of variety of polymers, hence a mixture of cellulases, xylanases, ligninases, amylases, and pectinases hydrolyzes the complex polymers, generating free sugars. The hexose sugars can be fermented to ethanol by Saccharomyces cerevisiae, whereas Pichia is useful for the bioconversion of pentose sugars. In this study, Saccharomyces cerevisiae was used for the process of fermentation. Since India ranks first in the production of banana, third for potato, and fourth in the world for the production of oranges, there is significant amount of non-edible material generated due to the consumption of these food materials or their other products. Hence, the raw material is available at a large scale and does not incur any extra cost for special cultivation. In order to evaluate the yield of ethanol related to the solids present in the raw material, the moisture content in the raw material was determined. Banana peels had maximum moisture followed by orange and potato peels. The carbohydrate content was highest in potato followed by banana and orange. And after saccharification, the residue with potato peels as the starting material had least amount of unreleased sugar. Thus, nearly 90.6% of the sugar could be made available from potato peels for conversion to alcohol, which was significantly higher than 77.3 and 73% in banana and orange peels. If the raw material was not pretreated and was directly subjected to enzymatic treatment, then the percentage of saccharification reduced considerably explaining the importance of pretreatment in the process of biological saccharification. Pretreatment reduces the complexity of the substrate, making it more susceptible to enzyme attack. The enzymes were used in a stepwise process due to the difference in the composition of the raw material. As seen, the potato peels were a better substrate for amylases and cellulases, whereas banana peels were good substrates for amylases, cellulase, and xylanase, and orange peels could be effectively sacrificed with pectinase and cellulase. Pre-treatment with dilute acids and alkalis contributed in the sacrification process. Mainly, acidic treatment led to the release of sugar. However, in most of the cases, this sugar was not suitable for growth and fermentation by the yeast. Rather, Alkyl treatment not only aided in making substrate more susceptible but also enabled an appropriate conversion of the sacrificed material to ethanol. More or less similar alcohol content was obtained with all the three raw materials, particularly ranging from 48 to 49 percent. Dilution of sacrificed material with molasses also yielded the alcohol in the same range. Thus, both pretreatment and biological treatment with the enzymes led to the sacrification of raw material, yielding sugar ranging from 70 to 90 percent, and nearly half of it could be converted to ethanol. Thus, these raw materials can serve as very effective low-cost feedstocks for the production of ethanol. Blending with the molasses can further enhance the process where hydrolysates with low sugar concentrations can also be used for the production of ethanol. Overall, the process can be scaled up for the production of ethanol at a commercial scale. Thus, we have successfully demonstrated 
the use of low cost agricultural residues for the production of biofuels which can have an indirect implication on the global warming or on climate change the authors duly cite the literature referred and acknowledge their institute Dr. D.Y. Patel Biotechnology and Bioinformatics Institute located at Pune, India, where this work was carried out. We also thank the Climate Change Conference organizers for giving us this platform to present our work. And to the participants of this conference, we wish a very good luck. Thank you.